Okay, brothers and sisters, we are here with Jay Easley. Hey, how are you? Hey, Look at I'm getting older from the last video. I got readers on now. There you go. And um, uh, Kyle Churnside. Kyle Churnside is the music group professional trainer right here, ladies and gentlemen. You might recognize him from a, the touring road of audio and good things. Hola. And uh, Kyle is going to walk us through the new uh, update of the Gen 2 software for the Midas Pro mixing platform. So away we go. Right on. Uh, today we're working with the 2C, the compact, uh, my favorite console as well. Uh, I've had 2.1 beta for a little while, but uh, within this week we've released uh, to the public 2.102. Uh, some of the features that we put into this uh, update are uh, compressor styles are now exactly like the X08, which is going to contain the more button, which is going to give you more coloration of the actual design of the compressor. And through the four modes, you are going to get all four and the little known secretive fifth, which is the shimmer. Uh, that used to be only available on the outputs. You'll have that ac across the input section as well. Um, the more button, of course, adds more coloration and the XL8s came with a presence on each of the, the compressors. Now that's available all across the Pro Series desk as well. Um, going to the gate section, uh, we're gonna have three different styles of gates that you can choose from in real time on the console. Uh, of course, the normal hysterious gate, uh, a transient gate now that gives you the transient accent knob at the bottom to dial it in even finer, and a ducker. So just a reiteration, uh, the compressor styles, adaptive or a corrective compressor, an adaptive compressor, creative, vintage, and shimmer all across the input styles that could be changed on the fly through uh, live mixing. Three gate styles as well in the new 2.1 update. Also, in our effects platform, we added a few new items that are, people are really excited about. In our effects page, uh, this is a phase uh, coherence machine. Uh, basically what you're going to do is fade or, uh, feed two input lines in, say a base DAI and a base mic, and be able to adjust the phase uh, coherently with each other so um, they'll be in time with each other coming in and leaving the console. Uh, the next item that we have in our effects rack is this item called the Sub Monster. What this is going to do is give you frequency harmonies, where frequency harmonies aren't created in the actual instrument that you're using. Uh, what I've been telling my uh, class is that if you have a guy that brings in a DI'd bass or a small amplifier, that's not quite getting the frequencies that you need. You could go in and use the tune to find frequencies to modulate that that's not actually used um, or not actually created in the instrument that you're using. Uh, also, it's good to put on a speakers on a stick situation to give a little bit more oomph to your PA or uh, it'd be a really good way to blow them up, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I bet you could do that, huh? A lot of time was spent on this, as you can tell, with the spinning reels, huh. with the, the Clark Technic uh, reels that they put on it. Um, this is a tape saturator, two channels in, two channels out, uh, gives you nice tape saturation. Uh, this is able to be plugged in anywhere across the, the console with an insert. Um, you have input gain control, drive control, bias, T-drive, and output gain across it. Um, this is a really cool unit for those who like using a little tape saturation on their outputs. Uh, give it a little bit more of that analog, that Midas feel to it. Uh, they did spend a lot of time on the graphics. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Spinning reels. And then the last item that they put into the effects rack is a classic reissue of the DN60 real-time spectrum analyzer. Um, it's going to give you eight ins and eight outs that you can compare to each other in real time uh, from anywhere on the console. This is a priceless uh, piece that they added to the collection. That way uh, 
you don't you could use this for a reference point for your rooms for your monitoring anything uh, that the the old DN60 gave you as an outboard piece is now an inboard plug-in um, also some advances in 2.1 is the actual response time and speed uh, with with some upgrades to our system um, you're able to create a faster response whether it's just getting and touching the sections to get into them and uh, just faster than normal it's a uh, way more responsive a lot of my calls from my clients already have already uh, explained that it's, uh, it's fast but now it's even faster it's like I said nobody was complaining about the speed <laughs> no one was so. complaining about the so speed. we made it faster <laughs> we just made it a little bit faster so um, We'll have to do some latency tests, but uh, from the last ones that we had, there were no complaints from desk to in-ear. Uh, have been great. Uh, everyone notices the Midas sound right away, but faster response in a live audio situation is never bad. There you go. And uh, that about it? That's about it for the, the new 2.1 updates. Uh, everyone's really excited about the new um, effects modules for sure. Uh, probably the last thing that we'll show is everything is going to come up in a library style setting instead of a list. So now you can actually go into the library, choose your item, close it up. It's a little bit easier to look at. Um, coming in and changing your devices is a little bit simpler. Uh, what other one that we, did we add? I don't think the last update we added the dynamic EQ which has been a fan of, of many uh, they went in and actually adjust some frequency response so uh, it's a little bit more finute to what has been going on I haven't personally checked it out but a lot of people are using this um, as like a C4 type plug-in dynamic EQ okay great Kyle thanks very much appreciate you taking the time no worries and uh, away we go cheers thanks